As part of their PAX East 2017 showing, which also included a Final Fantasy XIV community Q&A and a short Final Fantasy XV panel in conjunction with Nier Automata, Square Enix did a full hour-long panel for Final Fantasy XII, The Zodiac Age. It featured the game's director, Takashi Kitano, and the game's producer, Hiraki Kato, as they looked to share all new details of the upcoming title. To start things off, Katana took the audience through a demo that's available on the show floor and spoke about some small things they've attempted to change for the re-release version. One of their aims was to improve the fidelity of the in-game character renders to ensure that they were a much closer match to the concept art in the original version. They noted that each character has specific features in the artwork and they looked to enhance these as a primary focus. For example, with Vaughn, they felt his unique characteristics were his metal armor, as well as his bare chest, and these areas were completely reproduced from scratch. With Pinello, this saw them actively attempting to bring out the texture of her clothes, which were made of leather. And with Fran, they really wanted to show off what they felt was her greatest asset, her derriere. Another example can be seen with the crystal shield, which has been improved to include reflections and glare. Kata then talked about how Hitoshi Sakimoto has re-recorded the entire original soundtrack using a live orchestra, and that new tracks have been composed specifically for the Zodiac Age. You can switch between the two soundtrack versions from the config menu, but we'll get onto that in a minute. Other improvements include the ability to move around much faster. By pressing L1, you can change the game's speed between normal, times 2, and times 4. This will allow you to walk to far away places much quicker, and it can also be used to speed the farming process too. They wanted to introduce this change to speed up progression and make the experience for the user much smoother. Loading time between areas has also been significantly improved to aid with this. Tapping the L3 button will also bring up a much larger version of the map, which gets overlaid on top of the action so you can see it at all times. One of the other elements they talked about was the inclusion of Trial Mode, which was also featured in the International Zodiac Job System. It sees you take on 100 successive stages, with HP, MP, and other status effects carried on between the stages. They talked about the fact that this mode is very strategic, even at maximum level, and as a result, they think it's rather thrilling to try and conquer it. During the video they showed, Yasmat even appeared as the level 98 enemy. One of the big announcements was the various editions of the game that you can purchase at launch. The Collector's Edition, which is exclusive to the Square Enix store, will cost a whopping $199.99, contains the original soundtrack, an exclusive 6-card art set, a Collector's Edition Steelbook edition of the game, and the Judge Magister's Bus Set, which were all said to be exclusive to the Collector's Edition. They won't be sold anywhere else. Kind of reminds me of another recent collector's edition that said the same thing, only to renege on that because it was only the weapon that was exclusive, so we'll see how that one turns out. They also revealed a limited steelbook edition, which will cost $49.99, includes a different piece of artwork on the steelbook compared to the collector's edition, and they both include a piece of DLC that unlocks the option for you to listen to the original soundtrack, something which, to our knowledge, isn't included in the standard edition of the game. Unless we've misinterpreted this, which is possible as there's some serious mixed messaging going on here, it means that unless you get one of these special editions, you'll be forced to listen to the remastered soundtrack as you play through the game. And given how mixed the Final Fantasy X remastered soundtrack was, I'm not so sure that's a good choice. The last piece of news from the panel was that Balthier will be joining World of Final Fantasy on the 23rd of March for free. How do you guys feel about the different additions they've made available for purchase? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and subscribe. And if you'd like to support our channel further, please be sure to head on over to our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash FFUnion. These awesome folks have already done so, so why not join them? Thanks for watching guys, this is Lauren signing out. See you next time.